Okay, so we've been learning about Butterworth filters, and we just developed a set of equations that let us determine the appropriate filter order based on filter design specs. So let's actually work through an example now where we actually do this. So we are going to design a Butterworth filter that has these specifications. It has a passband frequency of 20, and the gain of that frequency is minus 3 dB. It has a stop band frequency of 50, and the gain of that frequency is minus 25 dB. We are going to find the filter transfer function, H of S, that has these characteristics. We do that. Well, let's return to our filter order equation. We're provided the stop band gain, the pass band gain, the stop band frequency, and the pass band frequency. If we plug these quantities into this equation, which I've done here, and then plug into our calculator to simplify, and then plug in again, we end up with n is equal to 3.142. Now n is the order of the filter and it has to be an integer. So we can't use the actual value 3.142. We have to round it to the in an integer. So typically we always round up. If we round up, we're actually gonna have a filter that has kind of better specifications, has a better roll off usually than if we had rounded down. So from 3.14, I'm going to round that up to 4. So at this point, we have decided that we need a fourth order filter if we want to be able to meet these design specifications as set by the gains and frequencies that we are provided. What about the cutoff frequency? If you remember, there are two different equations that we have that let us compute the cutoff frequency. If you have set your passband frequency, gain, and filter order, you can use equation three, which I've written right here, and plug in and compute the cutoff frequency. So if you plug those numbers in, so omega p was equal to 20, g sub p and db was equal to negative three, and the filter order we just determined was four, so two times four is eight. If you plug that into your calculator, you get 20.01. We also had equation four though. Equation four allows us to compute the cutoff frequency from the stop band specifications. So if we plug in the stop band specifications and the filter order, we actually get a cutoff frequency of 24.36 radians per second. So at this point, we kind of have a little bit of a dilemma. This actually says a cutoff frequency of 20.01 and a cutoff frequency of 24.36. These are different numbers. The reason they're different is because we didn't use the exact answer for n. We had to round it. We're not allowed to use a fraction. We had to round it to the integer 4. And because of that, we're not going to be able to meet our specifications exactly. So at this point, we have a choice. We can either kind of choose to match up to the passband specifications. In that case, we would choose you know, to hit this cutoff frequency. Or we could choose to hit the stop band specifications exactly. In that case, we would try to hit this cutoff frequency. We're going to go ahead and choose an omega C of equal to 20.01. So we are going to make sure that we hit the passband specifications exactly. And once we do that, we'll see where we hit in terms of stop band frequency and gain. So we can't hit all our design criteria exactly. We can't hit the stop band and the pass band exactly. We're going to go ahead and choose to hit the pass band exactly and see how far off we are in the stop band. So in just a minute, we'll actually let our cutoff frequency be 20.01. But before we can do that, we actually need to design the normalized transfer function first. Remember, that's our strategy. We start off with a normalized filter, and then we scale it up to meet the cutoff frequency that we want. So there's two different ways that we can design the normalized transfer function. One way is to go back to the equation that we had for the pole locations, and we can just compute this for k equals 1, 2, 3, and 4 when n is equal to 4, because that's the filter order we've chosen. So we could just plug into our calculator four times and figure out what those pole locations are, then construct the quantity 1 over s minus s1 times s minus s2 times s minus s3 times s minus s4, multiply all that stuff out, and then we would end up with a 1 over a polynomial quantity. So that'd be one way to do it. The other way to do it is to go look up in a table what that polynomial quantity is. The polynomial here on the denominator is the Butterworth filter polynomial of order 4. And you can actually just go look this up on Wikipedia or in a table in your textbook and just write down what that quantity is. 
So writing down the normalized transfer function is very easy. We just had to first know what value n we wanted. So we can just write this down from the table. And now we need to scale it up to the proper frequency. We have chosen to choose a frequency of omega c equal to 20.01. The way that we scale up our transfer function to the appropriate frequency is we replace all the s's with s over omega c. Here omega c is 20.01, so all the s's from the previous chart have been replaced with s over 20.01. So now I have the transfer function for the filter that I wanted. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this filter looks like in the frequency. So in this plot, I've actually plotted the amplitude response of the filter, and I actually plotted it for both values of omega c. If you remember a minute ago, we saw that because we had to round the filter order to an integer, we couldn't meet the stop band specifications and the pass band specifications exactly. And depending on which omega c we wanted, we could meet one exactly, but not the other, and vice versa. So here in the blue line is the filter amplitude response for omega c equals to 20.01. So this filter meets the passband specifications exactly. At omega equal 20, it's exactly equal to a negative 3. That was our passband specification. However, up high, remember our stop band spe specification said at omega equals 50, we need to be at minus 25. Well, we're not at minus 25, we're at minus 32. So we did not meet that specification exactly. However, typically you want to make sure that you're either at that specification or below. Low pass filters try to knock things down at high frequencies. So we're actually knocking things down too much. We're attenuating too much. Typically attenuating too much for a low pass filter is not a bad thing. That's an okay thing. So that's why we chose to meet the pass band specification and then overly attenuate at the higher frequency. The red curve shows what would have happened if we had gone with the other cutoff frequency. If we had chosen and used omega c equals 24.36, I meet my stop band specification perfectly now. At 50, I'm exactly equal to minus 25. So I meet my stop band specification exactly, but my pass band specification I'm not hitting anymore. At 20, I'm only down like maybe 1 dB and I needed to be down 3 dB. So typically that's a bad thing for a low pass filter. Typically for a low pass filter, you don't want to let too much through at low frequencies and that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're letting too many, too much of that frequency through. So this is why choosing omega c equals to 20.01 was kind of a smarter choice because it did exactly what it, I, I wanted to low frequencies and it over attenuated the high frequencies, which in general is okay for a low pass filter the red curve did the opposite. It let too much through at the low frequencies, which is bad, although it did perfectly meet the stop band spec. So that concludes our design example. It's pretty straightforward. We just have a couple equations that we can use. You compute the filter order based on your specs. You round it to the nearest integer, and then you compute the cutoff frequency. And based on what your goal is, you'll usually have to choose between one of two values. Once you've made that choice, you can plot the amplitude response of your filter, and it's going to meet the specs on each curve, but only one of them will be met. But typically, we'll go with the lower cutoff frequency to meet the passband spec and over-attenuate at high frequencies.